It's one of the most famous science fiction movies ever made, but it didn't come from the US and it didn't come from the UK. In fact, it came from Germany at the height of their Expressionist era. First released in 1927, this silent movie featured images which still resonate with fans nearly a hundred years later. Yes, we're talking about Metropolis, and this is Sign 5. Metropolis was based on the book by Thea von Harbo, who wrote the story whilst her husband, Fritz Lang, was preparing to make the film. As later noted by Fritz, one inspiration he had for the film was when he visited New York City in 1924 with all its massive buildings. The metropolis structure revolves around two distinct classes of society. The upper elite who live above ground whose ongoing focus is enjoying a hedonistic lifestyle of pleasure, whilst below them deep underground live the overworked and exploited labourers, who maintain the powerful machines which allow the city to operate. The story itself is set at an unspecified and often debated time in the future, as it follows Fredia Fredersen, the son of the city's much feared ruler York Fredersen, who falls in love with Maria a woman who is the symbolic figure of hope for the working class. Upon discovering how badly the workers are being treated, Fredert realises he needs to unite the two classes in an act of mediation. Whilst an important subplot of the story focuses on York's plans to capture Maria and replace her with a doppelganger so he can dominate the workers even further. One of the overarching themes of the film surrounds the futility of extreme social segregation. Because even though the elite may control the workers, paradoxically it's actually the workers who hold the balance of power, because they operate all the machines which allow the city to function. So actually it's in the best interest of the upper class to treat the workers better, even though they don't realise it. Although there have been a number of attempts to restore the film, one of the more controversial ones occurred in 1984. In this instance, Italian composer and producer Giorgio Moroder realised that a proper version of Metropolis didn't exist. And so, armed with a limited amount of surviving footage, he began a serious attempt to restore it. However, knowing the film would be viewed by a modern 80s audience, he opted to add some colour tinting to the black and white images, along with subtle sound effects. But most significant of all was his inclusion of a rock music soundtrack featuring songs recorded by popular artists of the time, in lieu of the original orchestral soundtrack. Although some critics consider Giorgio's version of the film to be a desecration of a classic, for many people it was actually their very first introduction to a silent film. As a result, not only did people start to show an interest in the movie, but it also gained a whole new audience and a brand new fan base. Somewhat poetically, it's actually from this film that other restorations began to gain momentum. Currently the most complete version of the film is the 2010 edition, which follows on from the excellently restored version produced in 2001. As fate would have it, in 2008 additional footage was located in both Argentina and New Zealand, which was then incorporated into the 2001 edit. Unfortunately, the Argentinian footage in particular was of very poor quality, so it's rather distracting when viewed in the final film. However, from an historical perspective, it's now believed the film is around 95% complete from its original 1927 counterpart. Yet there was one aspect of Metropolis which not only put it in the pantheon of cinematic classics, but also in the consciousness of sci-fi fans for decades. Aside from the stunning visuals of the city itself, the film became famous for producing one of the world's first on-screen robots. Despite its limited screen time, the robot didn't just look extremely convincing, but its core design is still echoed in many human-like robot and androids produced in films today. Featured in the film are the two main protagonists, Fredia Fredersen played by Gustav Froelich and Maria played by Brigitte Helm, whilst for the antagonist there is York Fredersen played by Alfred Ebel, whose driving motivation for greed and power is purely to keep the city operating. So in effect he is basically the equivalent of a modern business tycoon. Under the outstanding direction of Fritz Lang and the great musical score by Gottfried Huberts, Metropolis was highly criticised upon its release and was re-edited to be a lot shorter for the US Hollywood market, which ironically it was intended to compete against. However, over time the film has gained significant critical traction and is now considered a masterpiece in the sci-fi genre. So who should see the film? Being a classic story between the rich and the poor and good versus evil, the film works on all levels for all audiences, and even nearly 100 years later there are still lessons to be learned from it. So if you haven't seen the film before, then you're in for a treat. Though be aware, Metropolis is a silent movie which most people have never experienced before. Aside from having intertitles to read, the performances of the cast can be considered almost comical by today's standards, because exaggeration of movement was necessary to convey emotion on the screen. But putting that aside, if you watch only one silent movie in your life, Metropolis should be it. And for that reason alone, it's well worth watching.